Seed dormancy in nature occurs so that plants germinate when the conditions are suitable to give plants the best chance of survival. As gardeners, we can mimic certain stimuli to get seeds to grow when we want them to. All the seeds I'm using today have come from a native seed supplier, which you can order online. That's important, of course, you can't collect native seeds from the wild without a licence. The first technique is heat treatment. And this particular species here is Canadian Nigricans. It's from the Fabaceae family. And the other one that I've got is Hardenbergia violacea, which I've got growing in the garden already, but this is another variety called Alba. It's a white flowering form. Now, like many of the Fabaceae, and certainly with these two species, they've got a very hard seed coat, and you have to crack that seed coat for the seeds to germinate. And the easiest way to do that, would you believe, is with boiling water. Now, this has just come off the boil, so it's probably just sub 100 degrees. And you just pour that in. And that needs to sit for about 8 to 12 hours to do its job. But, of course, I prepared some earlier. Here we go. And now it's a matter of getting these seeds into some decent seed raising mix. I'm using tweezers to transfer the seeds into the trays, avoiding any floaters, which are unlikely to be viable. I'm sowing two seeds per pot and will thin out to one strong seedling per cell once they've germinated. These are relatively large seeds, best sown at a depth roughly two and a half times their size. Press down the soil, gently water in and label. The next technique is scarification. And the species that I'm using is Acacia lassia carpa, a beautiful little shrub that grows locally through here. I've got the low growing form. Now, again, acacias have a very hard seed coat and it needs scratching so the water can get in. And to do that, it needs a bit of a sandpaper. Gently rub the seeds between two pieces of sandpaper for about a minute. The aim is to scratch the seed coat, not turn them into dust. Some plant species need to experience the cold, moist conditions of winter before they would germinate in spring such as Eucalyptus diversifolia or soap mallee from the south coast of WA. And guess what? We can recreate those conditions by getting a container, putting in some perlite or vermiculite, like I'm using here, filling that up, and then it's a matter of sowing the seeds over the top. Now, the eucalypts have a very small seed, so I'll just do this carefully. Just going to sprinkle it over the surface of the vermiculite. And the vermiculite will just help hold the moisture, but also allows for plenty of aeration. Then a fine misting, just to moisten it. Then the lid goes on. Now I'll clearly label that. And then would you believe it goes into the fridge for about four weeks. After that, it'll come out, lid off, and into my nursery. I'll keep it damp, but not too wet and these seeds should germinate in about a week. And once they're underway, I'll prick them out and plant them on into a pot filled with seed raising mix and grow them like a regular seedling. The final method is inundation. I'm filling a tray with water and in it are the seed raising containers ready to go. A number of wetland species like to germinate in waterlogged soils. And that's exactly what I've created here. There's seed raising mix in punnets, and then this reservoir of water, and the water wicks up through capillary action, creating these boggy conditions. And this is perfect for queen trigger plant, or Stylidium athenes. It's the tufting species with gorgeous pink flowers. And I'll sow into these trays, grow them on in here, and once they're established, I'll plant them around the edge of my pond. These tiny little seeds are just lightly sprinkled over the top.
and pressed into the soil with the dibber. Then the trays go into my nursery. And the soap mallee seeds go into the fridge. Job done.